Quick disclaimer, before you watch this video, watch the introduction to the programming series, which is uh, down below in the description. This programming video builds upon the concepts discussed in part zero of the realistic programming series. So if you haven't checked out that video already, please go and check it out. I'll be waiting right here after you're done. Hey guys, welcome to part one of the realistic programming series, programming realistic music series. I don't know what I'm gonna call it. Uh, I guess you'll find out sooner or later. Uh, welcome to this first part. And this is where I'll be discussing how to program a realistic piano or any keyboard realistically for that matter. So before you learn to program any melodic music instrument, you need to learn how to program the piano. This is important because the piano is actually the most easiest to understand in terms of all the instruments that you could possibly program. It is a percussive melodic instrument. So how does a piano work? When you press a key, you get a sound, right? Well, not quite. In between the steps of you pressing the key and a sound actually coming out of the piano, a lot of things are actually happening. When you press the key, there's a lever that actuates a hammer, and this hammer is what hits the string. Simultaneously, a damper releases the string and allows it to vibrate. The moment you let go of the key, the damper closes down and the key stops vibrating. Now bear this in mind, this is important for the next step. At the bottom of the piano are three different pedals. I do not care or even know what the first two do. They, they, they vary across different piano models. But on the rightmost side is a standard sustain pedal. This sustain pedal is also known as a damper release pedal. And what it does is it releases the dampers across all the strings of the piano so that when you press a note, the note is sustained as long as the string can vibrate. Pianists use this to create very blurred and smooth textures. We call this legato, when you, when you have a note that continuously moves from one to another. But keep in mind that holding down the sustain pedal as you keep playing and changing chords will make the performance sound extremely muddy, which is why there is a very controlled and definite way of using that. In this tutorial, we'll be covering that as well. For this example, I'm using Beethoven's for Elise, a piano piece that most of you have heard at one point or the other, and since it's familiar to most people, I thought, it's a, I thought it would be a nice starting point to understand how to get from sounding like this to this. Let's get right into it. Okay, so um, right here in front of me, I have a programmed version of her Elise by Beethoven. Uh, but before we listen to that, let's actually give a listen to the original thing. What we have here is uh, the first section of, of for release. We're not going to do this part, we're just going to do everything that comes before it. So here is what I programmed. Well, it sounds like absolute garbage. So uh, what we're going to do is first figure out where the chords are right so uh, let's select let me select this part for example right here and give this a listen so at the end of this highlighted section you hear the chord change right so and then that's the next section and then this is the next section so what we're going to do is uh, this actually we're going to we're going to extend the notes all the way till the end of the chord change. Right, so it sounds like, uh, oh yeah, this is also a part of it. So it sounds like this. All right, so we're going to do that. And uh, before we listen to things out of context, let's just do this for this first half of the piece. Uh, excuse the sound of traffic outside. I actually... Um, uh, live in the middle of Bangalore and uh, yeah it's it's kind of noisy outside it's it's like seven it's almost eight o'clock in the morning so yeah uh, check this out yep already starting to sound better isn't it so uh, let's do the same for the beginning as well uh, there isn't exactly a chord over here I, I'm gonna leave that one as it is actually 
that isn't exactly a chord over here, but it kind of sounds like it belongs to the same, like it sounds the same, you know? Right, so that kind of does make more sense. Um, the second half of this uh, sounds pretty much the same. Well, this is the only different part. So what we're going to do is just delete these. Uh, delete these. And delete these. And then copy this, this, and this right over here. Okay, um, and then extend all of this. Yeah, this is not there really. So yeah. Uh, extend that all the way till the end. Extend this till the end and pretty much do this for the whole thing. Well, that sounds pretty fantastic. It's starting to sound very close to the original thing, right? subtle this sounds more gentle so the first thing i'm going to do is bring the whole thing down and i'm not talking about the volume i'm talking about the velocity so uh this is what we're going to do right it starts so sounding nicer but as you can hear there is some there are like velocity differences between each note There's some soft and some louder parts. So what we're going to do is we're going to split this into its left hand and right hand counterparts. And to illustrate what I mean by left hand and right hand, when you, if you have a keyboard in front of you, I'm, I'm talking about like a controller, MIDI controller or a piano. So what you're going to do is your left hand, uh, as you can see, this is an A and this is an A as well. Right. So uh, if you actually try stretching your hand on the keyboard, you'll no notice that you can only stretch across one uh, octave maybe a little more or a little less so that's that's kind of common sense so that kind of tells me that this is the left hand and also if I were to delete this and listen to only the right hand I will I will get the tune of for Elise oh well here uh, this isn't actually a part of it so um this kind of uh, feels like it's it's actually played with the right hand, I think, but uh, sorry this, but it does sound like uh, it belongs to the left hand. So what we're going to do is move this back up there and uh, just decrease the velocity, maybe like, you know, to uh, maybe about 70 percent of it. It's already starting to sound better, but this now, uh, this is kind of the more general way to go about doing, uh, making a piano sound more realistic, like make the left hand softer than the right hand. But that's not very simple in this case, because this is a classical piece. And uh, the tendency is that as you go from uh, the left hand is softer than the right hand, but as you go from the lower notes to the higher notes, um, you kind of... Uh, ramp them up like these are steps going from higher lower to higher notes so we need to see steps here as well going from like in, in terms of velocity so we're going to do that to the entire piece and we're going to see what happens right Well, that's starting to sound better, but uh, we're going to have to do this here as well. Now, this is a little different. This is not exactly going from, uh, in terms of pitch, going from down to up. Uh, but if you listen to the actual piece, it starts from soft to loud. So let's do some of that and see how it sounds, shan't we? This makes more sense, actually. Yeah, 
that's more like it that's more like it this is pretty much now if, if you want things in the grid this is pretty much how it should sound uh, now if you're not interested in going like more getting more realistic than this then you can stop watching right now but uh, if you're not if you've got OCD like me and you want to make this sound even more realistic for example this, like, this doesn't sit on a grid right It, it breathes so what i'm going to do is with my cursor on the tempo i'm going to push up and down and try and figure out get a feel of how this should sound right so i'm going to move the my uh, time marker to the beginning and that was garbage but that was a rough approximation of it but i do have a really good idea of how this is supposed to sound in terms of tempo so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create an automation clip for my tempo and give myself a bit of resolution to work with so i'm going to make sure that my step sizes are adequate so that i uh, while keeping this locked to the grid um and that's because just for ease of editing nothing more actually um i'm going to kind of like ramp this up but see uh, nobody actually plays like this uh, we kind of have a tendency of uh, of uh, starting off soft and as we get loud we kind of slow down you know so uh, this this would be nice the, in terms of tempo as we get as we reach the speed that we're going for uh, having this kind of s curve would be nice rather than having a, um, um, straight lines it just doesn't sound natural Again, there is no hard and fast way of doing this. You can do what you like. Uh, there seems to be a dog that's really excitable outside. Oh, I made a little mistake as well. Uh, I'll fix it right now. So my mistake is this is not supposed to look like this. This is kind of supposed to be like this. Exaggerate these a bit more. And raise these peaks up even further. Well, I think that sounds pretty darn realistic. I don't know about you, but I think we're done. Let's give a listen to the original thing. Sounds amazing. Okay, so uh, this sounds pretty close to the actual thing. So what we're going to do is try replacing this with a very very generic ugly sounding key keyboard patch and see if this still sounds realistic so this is fl keys which is like fl studio's most basic uh keyboard plugin piano plugin yep sounds amazing let's try this with something else this is a premium plugin. So uh, this is just to prove to you that you don't exactly need high-end premium plugins to sound good. Um, any decent sounding plugin should do the job. Uh, pretty much your stock plugins will will do it for you as well. Let's try it. Addictive keys. Well. Sounds super close, you know. Uh, we'll just extend these out a bit more. Yep, and there you go. We've programmed for at least to be extremely realistic, to sound extremely realistic. We turned Gen a generic p uh, MIDI interpretation of fur release into something that's actually expressive and that actually feels natural and realistic. You can go even further than this, but I don't think uh, it's practical or worth doing that anyway. 
uh, because uh, no one's actually no one's actually going to program for a release and like upload it online, you know, other than for bragging rights, which I can totally do. But whatever. Um, so thank you for watching. I hope you liked what you learned today. And if you like to do the thing, if you didn't like it, do the other thing. But before you do this thing, like leave a comment in the comment section as to how I can get better so uh, I can do a better job the next time. So next up, uh, I will follow up with uh, how to program guitars, drums, uh, strings, and if you want to, if you want me to teach you uh, any specific instruments, and uh, uh, do let me know in the comment section. Yeah, drums as well. Drums. Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned drums, but drums as well. So thank you for watching once more. Please share with your friends if they, if you think that this is going to be useful for them. Um, have a nice one.